In this video, I'll go over lesson 5.11 and 6.1. So if you need to skip through, go ahead and skip through the video so that you can see the other lesson. So first lesson is imaginary numbers, which is 5.11. And it kind of connected to a video. So from that video, our goal was to solve for this solution. And we're going to find out that there aren't any real solutions. So here we go. So if I want to solve for this problem, I'm going to subtract 1, and my overall answer is x squared equals to negative 1, but then I have to square root both sides, and then I get x equals the square root of negative 1. So this right here will be undefined in our calculator, but we actually have a solution to that, which we call imaginary number. So we're going to get an error when we square root, so what do we do? We're going to transform our solutions into an imaginary number. Um, and then our imaginary number is denoted by the letter i. So i is actually equivalent, equivalent to negative 1, and that's our rule for imaginary numbers. And then i squared is actually equivalent to negative 1 itself. So if I were to kind of transform all this, so let's say if I square this, then I technically square that. So this turns into this by squaring, and this actually also turns into negative 1 because notice that if we square a square root, those things cancel and vice versa. Okay, so let's try simplifying this. So this is a problem that I should break down, and I actually am going to break th this down into three numbers because 81 is technically negative 1 times um, 81 actually so I'm actually gonna break it down so I'm gonna break this down into two numbers which is negative 1 and 81 which they can have or which they belong in their own square root as well if you look at it that way and then from there I am going to use my rule so I'm going to use my first rule because I know I is equivalent to the square root of negative 1 so here I'm going to write I and on the other side the square root of 81 is 9 so if I were to take this and simplify it as much as possible this would be 9i and I'm gonna box it like so alright so our next problem is the square root of negative 36 so if I were to break this down into two numbers I'm going to go negative 1 times 36 I don't have to break it down even more just because I know that I could square root 36 nicely and this is going to equal to 6 which is going to come from here and then the square root of negative 1 we're going to use rule number 1 which turns into i and this is how I'm going to simplify that so moving forward this answer should be the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 169 which equals to 13i and done now we have the square root of negative 18. So if you were to square root 18, you can't really do it. So I'm just actually going to break this down a little bit more. So I'm going to go negative 1 times, and then I have some options. It's either 2 times 9 or 3 times 6, but I'm going to choose 2 times 9 because I can actually square root 9. And this will give me 3 i square root of 2 and this is the order that I'm going to put everything in. The square root usually goes last so that we don't stick anything under by mistake. This is going to be negative 1 and then it's either 2 times 6 or 3 times 4 but 3 times 4 is a better option because you can actually square root the 4. And my final answer is 4i square root of 3. Okay, so everything we have done was according to rule number one, but now we're going to move on to rule number two. So rule number two, it says i squared is equivalent to negative one. So that just means use substitution. Wherever you see an i squared, just replace it with negative one. So I'm going to go four times negative one, which gives me negative four. And that is my most simplified answer. In this problem, I have three i squared minus 1 so wherever I see an i squared I'm replacing it my final answer is going to be negative 4 alright so for this problem 
um, we have 2i times 16i, which is technically doing 2x times 16x. So it kind of works out in a sense of this turns into 32x squared. So this is similar where this is 32i squared. And notice that there's an i squared in this problem, which we should know now that it is equivalent to negative 1. So our final answer is negative 32. And that is most simplified. Okay, so that was lesson 5.11. Now we have lesson 6.1, which is special right triangles. So with special right triangles, um, we first have to focus on the Pythagorean theorem because for the Pythagorean theorem, if we have two sides, then it'll help us find our missing side of C. And then we can use the formula A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A and B, these two things are what we call the legs. It holds the triangle up. And then this is our hypotenuse which is always C. So my first example is just to allow you guys to solve using the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to call this A, B, C. And then if I were to plug it into my formula, I have X squared plus three squared equals six squared. So to clean everything up, it's going to look something like that. And I'm going to square root both sides. And notice that 27 cannot be square rooted. But as we noticed before, that we can break down 27 into a few numbers so that we can at least simplify it. And these are the two numbers I'm breaking it down to, 3 and 9, which I multiply to get 27. The square root of 9 is 3. And then we can't square root 3, so I'm going to leave that alone. So my x value here is 3 square root of 3. All right, so to move forward and try to introduce you guys about these special right triangles, um, I'm going to actually reflect my triangle onto the other side. And when I do that, what happens is that I actually get some type of triangle. And this triangle is actually an equilateral triangle because if I reflect my hypotenuse, this side turns into six centimeters as well. If I reflect the leg of three, this side is also a leg of three. So notice that this, is six that is six the this is six this is six as well and then this is my height of three square root of three and also in an equilateral triangle all the angles are exactly the same so we know that a triangle in general is equal to 180 degrees and if i divide that by three um, each side should be 60 degrees so this is 60 degree this is 60 degree however because the top is split technically this is 30 and 30. So it makes a total of 60 degrees, okay? Okay, so with this equilateral triangle, this is actually special because it creates some type of pattern. And here this is again. So this creates a pattern because if I um, look at these numbers, these numbers are actually going to have a relationship with each other. So let's say if I were to change these numbers, so let's say if I change this number into a four, this height, is actually going to be four square root of three and this is actually going to be eight and then the pattern will go on exactly like this um, especially if i have this triangle where i call it a nine a 30 60 90. okay so we're going to try a problem and we're going to try to find x for this problem but i'm going to already tell you that i know x equals seven square root of three so notice this pattern where we see 7, 7 square root of 3, and this number 7 actually gets doubled to become 14. So this pattern will always show. So let me just prove that to you. So if I didn't know what x is, but I knew what 7 was and I knew what 14 was as well. And let me just clean this up for you guys. Okay, and if I were to square root both sides, I know 147 doesn't square root nicely, but I also know that I can multiply um, some numbers to give me 147. So 147 is technically the square root of 49 times the square root of three. So this one, um, notice that the square root of 49 is seven, and then you can't square root three. So this is my answer for this side, okay? And it's going to keep working again 
um, for other problems. So you guys are going to try out this problem, but what I'm going to tell you is if this number is 10, I know that x is going to be 10, and then my hypotenuse is going to double to get me 20, okay? So these are my numbers, and it's actually going to work out nicely if I were to actually prove all of this. So let me just show you that all of this actually works out nicely. So if I do this, that means that everything is going to work, okay? And if it doesn't work, then you know it's not going to make sense. So this 10 square root of 3 times 10 square root of 3 plus 100 equals 400, okay? So 10 square root of 3 times 10 square root of 3, something crazy that happens is I can do 10 times 10 first, um, which is 100. And then when I do this times that, the square root actually cancels and I just get the number three. Um, so when I s multiply two square roots together, it just gives me that actual number. And also, if you think of it that way, we can actually do it like this. So it's square root and the square cancel, so I just get the number three, and I have plus 100. And notice that as I am doing this, my answer is coming out nicely, and then I get 400 equals to 400, okay? So I know that the numbers that I have in here are correct, and notice that I just used um, my rule to get these numbers. So this is the idea of the special right triangle, which I call a 30, 60, 90. So in this 30, 60, 90, there is a pattern where across from the 30 is always just a single number. Across from the 60 is always that same number with the square root of 3 next to it, and then the hypotenuse always doubles. So let's say if I wanted to build a new triangle and I were to multiply my values, um, let's say if I wanted to make my triangle um, times, I don't know, 15, okay? So if I do times 15, I know this one is 15, then my hypotenuse always doubles to get 30, and notice if you do 2 times 15, you get 30. And then on the other side where you see um, the 1 square root of 3, it's actually going to be 15 square root of 3. And the square root of 3 is always across from the 60, so that's where the square root of 3 will always be. Okay, so in our special right triangle, number 2 is actually something called a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Um, this one's a little bit different just because we have, we have different angles. So notice 45 plus 45 plus 90 equals to 180. So if you need to calculate that, do so. But on one angle, we have 10 feet, and our other angle is also 45. So that means it has to open at the same length, so that is also 10 feet. And our goal is to find the missing side. So if I were doing 10 squared plus 10 squared equals x squared, because I don't know what x is, then I have 100 plus 100 equals x squared, which turns into that. And I'm going to square root both sides. And then I can't square root a 200, but I can simplify it into 100 times 2. So that means my x squared value, or my x value, is going to be 10 square root of 2. And like our 30, 60, 90 triangle, this one also has a pattern. So notice 10, 10, 10, but instead of square root of 3, we actually have square root of 2. And this is going to happen every single time. Okay, so to not show you all the proof, but this is actually going to be 3 feet as well, and then I have 3 square root of 2. And this is just coming from knowing that there is actually some type of pattern and notice where the square root of 2 is at this is at the hypotenuse okay so our pattern for 45 45 90 is that usually across from the 45s they are the same number however on the hypotenuse it's the number with the square root of 2 however for our 30 60 90 triangle um, across from the 30 is our single number. Across from the 60 is that number, but it has the square root of 3 with it. And then from our hypotenuse, we have to double whatever is across from the 30. So 1 times 2 is 2, so we know that is correct. 
And then here are the practice problems. Let me just show you some answers and I'll write in some keys as well. So across from the 30 is the 4. So this is the 60 degrees. So it has to be the same number, 4 square root of 3. So across from the 60 always has the square root of 3. And then double 4 to get 8. This is also a 30, 60, 90. Um, across from the 30, I know that whatever number I have should multiply by 2 to give me 12. So this has to be 6. And across from the 60 always has the square root of 3, but 6 has to go in front of it. So let me just highlight that square root of 3 across from the 60. I have another 30, 60, 90. Um, I know 8 is my hypotenuse, so I need to know whatever number across from the 30 is going to get multiply times 2 to give me 8. So I have 4. This is also 4 square root of 3 because that square root of 3 is across from the 60 typically. Okay, now 45, 45, 90 triangle. So across from 145 is a 5, therefore across from the other 45 is a 5. And my last one is 5 square root of 2. So I'm going to highlight the square root of 2. Um, and then across from my 45 is a 15. Across from my other 45 must be a 15. My last one is 15 square root of 2. And then notice that, notice where the pattern and where the square root of 2 is. So to remember, um, if it's square root of 2 or square root of 3, what I like to do is that 45, uh, 45, 45, 90, it has two of the same angle, okay? Um, so that means I'm going to use the square root of 2. However, in a 30, 60, 90, it has three different angles. So that means I'm going to use the square root of 3. But this is something you just kind of have to remember. But that was pretty much it for this lesson. So hopefully you took some things out of it and made a little bit more sense.